welcome to the Dental Eighteen Podcast. We're your hosts, Kira Dent and Dr. Mark Costas. Mark and I had this crazy idea that maybe we could combine a dentist and a team member's perspective because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. And Dental Eighteen Podcast was created. I'm a practicing dentist, a multiple practice owner, a dental performance coach, and the founder of the Dental Success Institute. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, biller, office manager, current practice owner, and international dental consultant. Mark and I don't just understand you, we are you. Our goal is to positively impact the world of dentistry by sharing our lessons learned from the road in hundreds of dental offices. Two perspectives, one mission, to help dental professionals reach their full potential. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. Hello, Dental Eighteen listeners. This is Kira Dent, and I have one of my good friends, that that amazing hygienist that you guys all know and love, Paige Benjamin. Paige, how are you today? I'm really good. How are you, Kira? Good. I, I giggle every time I say your name because I say your full name, Paige Benjamin, because I just I don't know I don't know why, but I always <laughs> want to say your full name, so it makes hey, me that's happy. great. <laughs> that's my name. So nothing wrong name. with that. It is. All righty, my dear. We decided to do we pop on the mics one more time today and talk about one of my favorite topics because I feel like it's an easy, easy way for hygiene, but a lot of times it's not talked about and it's fluoride. Dun, 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 dun. I love fluoride. Fluoride. Yes. <laughs> I was like, she, I lost her. She, she's not on board with fluoride. <laughs> not on board with fluoride. <laughs> Darn no, it. And I, cut the I mic. love fluoride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love fluoride. And you know what? It can be used for so many different things, but I think people kind of get confused and fall into this rut of, oh, my patient, they're not going to want it. They've told me before they don't want it, so I'm not even going to tell them again. They, you know, they don't have any cavities, so they're not going to benefit from it, and that's all fluoride is good for, so I'm just not even going to tell them about it. And, you know, I remember listening to one of your podcasts one time, and you had said, you have one of the cleanest mouths. You know, you, you rarely get cavities. But you always want the fluoride at every six month appointment. Mm -hmm. And um, that really has stuck with me for a long time because there have been times that I think, oh, my patient doesn't really need it. They don't have um, recession. They don't have dry mouth. They didn't have any cavities. They haven't had a cavity in years. So I'm not going to recommend it. And then I think, no, Kira wants it every six months. So I'm going to talk to my patient about it. And I do. And they're all for it. And it's not a benefit reimbursed by insurance, but they still want it. And I thought, well, I could have just missed that opportunity um, for that production, but also for my patient totally, because they deserve that. And they, they look forward to that and they want it. But sometimes I think that, that patients shy away from asking for it because if the dental professional doesn't recommend it or doesn't ask them if they want to do it, they think, oh, well, they didn't bring it up. Maybe it's not necessary every six months. Mm -hmm. So then at the next six month appointment, they don't even bring it up. They don't say, hey, can we do fluoride? And I've had that too, where patients have asked me, can we do the fluoride today? And I'm like, oh my goodness, yes. (laughs) I didn't even bring it up to you. Yes, let's do it. 100%. I totally agree. And I, I, I use this a lot with hygienists because they say, because I believe I am a huge, huge, huge fluoride fan. If you're not a fluoride fan, figure it out, get behind it, or just realize that that's not your thing. And it's totally fine. I know there are some practices out there that are not fluoride advocates. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some people think that fluoride is rat poison. And I always say, if I really believed that I was giving you rat poison, I should not be working in this profession. So that's kind of how I deal with the whole rat poison conversation. But at the end of the day, I am such a believer in fluoride. I feel like I could get any patient to accept fluoride or night guards because those are two things that I am wildly, wildly, wildly passionate about. Same thing with implants. I just believe in them so much. And when you believe in it, you can then educate and help your patients believe in it as well. So that's first and foremost with fluoride. But I I, I love to, to challenge hygienists' brains because I say, you know, I actually aim for about 90% to 95% acceptance with every single patient with fluoride. That is a high, high, high number. And people think I'm crazy town. And they're like, but Kira, there's a few patients that really don't need fluoride. And my question is, why are you the one who's quantifying or qualifying me to deserve fluoride or not? Your job as a healthcare professional is to educate me and then let me make the decision. But I will tell you my entire adult life, nobody 
ever offered me fluoride. And I was so Mm -hmm. angry because when I became a dental assistant and I learned all these things and I started working in a practice, I realized that there was Floridex toothpaste, that there was fluoride varnishes I could get every six months. And I thought, those dirty rascals, nobody has ever told me about fluoride. Not once. They took it upon themselves to determine that I was not a candidate. And I want to be proactive and preventative. I do not want cavities. I do not want my teeth to get to a bad spot. And then all of a sudden you recommend it. I want to know right now today what I can do to be proactive and preventative. And when I say this, I watch the hygienist's minds just change and they think, well, yeah, at the end of the day, I guess it's not my job to to determine do I qualify for fluoride or not based on you, Paige, what you think I want out of my own life. <laughs> no, tell exactly. me, tell me these benefits. Tell me why fluoride is fantastic for me. Yes, it is $35 out of pocket. I paid $32 yesterday out of pocket. And guess what, guys? I can get fluoride for free across the nation because I go to tons of different dental offices and you better believe they're willing to put the fluoride on me for free. I paid $32 out of pocket yesterday because my teeth were sparkly clean. They were totally perfect. And I wanted the fluoride on so I could get the best results on there. And I feel like Gosh, if you just believe in it, not not being afraid. I think patients, they they feel because if insurance doesn't accept it and you are leading with insurance of, nope, insurance doesn't cover it, bada bing, bada boom, you just lost because the patient no longer thinks that it's even necessary. That's where you lose it. But Paige, how do you get, what do you say to patients to help them? There's the whole insurance topic of fluoride. There's the, the out-of-pocket cost of fluoride. But how do you get around that as a hygienist? Because I've got my own ideas, but I'm not a hygienist. So I want to know from your world, how do you get around fluoride and help patients get that, that awesome benefit? Yeah. So like you said earlier, you know, it's, it's a preventive measure. It's not, oh, you already have a cavity. Let's slap some fluoride on it. Well, the damage is done. Yeah. You can maybe help it a little bit, but this is a preventive measure. So, you know, Kira, you don't have any feelings. You don't have anything maybe that we would think that is concerning today, but let's put some fluoride on there um, to prevent anything from happening in the next six months, you know? Exactly. And that's what a lot of people get confused about is they think there has to be something wrong in order to recommend fluoride. And really it's the opposite. Amen. You know, there, there doesn't have to be anything to recommend it because you are preventing things from happening. You are trying to prevent that, trying to prevent any fillings, um, any recurrent decay, anything like that. So, you know, what I do is I just say, you know, Kira, based on what, um, based on your current situation today, looks like you have some recession. Let me show you in the mirror what that looks like. Let me show you what I'm seeing. So you can also keep an eye on it at home. Are you having any sensitivity in those areas? And most of the time patients will say, yeah, I am. I didn't, I just thought it was sensitive teeth. Well, your sensitivity is most likely coming from these areas of recession. It's your root surface is starting to show because your, your gums have pulled away from your tooth. And that area right there is going to be, it's significantly softer than your enamel. So it's going to be more likely to get decay. So what I would recommend for you is a fluoride treatment. Um, you know, it takes one minute to put on at the very end of your appointment. A lot of people say that it helps with sensitivity for up to five months. I work with a hygienist right now. Um, that says that it helps with sensitivity for five months. And right there, patients are like, boom, done. Um, So, you know, I give them why they need it, show them in their mouth, explain that, you know, we can just put it on right at the very end of the appointment. You can go about your day as normal. You can eat and drink right away. Um, And then I, you know, I, I try not to talk about the insurance too much. I just say, you know, for adults, it's really unfortunate. The insurance will likely not cover this specific fluoride therapy. but like I told you, I think it would really benefit your situation. It's, you know, $27, $35, whatever. And, um, it'll be very quick at the end of the appointment and then we can send you on your way. Just don't even really give them the option to say no. No. If you give them, do you want to do this? Is this something that you want to do today? Um, no, I'm okay. Don't give them the option. Just assume they're going to say yes. Correct. And move forward. I love it. I totally love it because I think it's, Uh, Also, use your doctors. Yesterday in the exam, I loved it. I was, this is a new office that I went to. I've never been there. So I was, had my critical, critical eyes on because I chose a dentist. It's super scary for me to choose a dentist. I see lots of offices. So I get real nervous when I actually have to be a patient. And I loved that the dentist came in and he said, you know, Kara, I I would totally recommend a fluoride treatment for you. Let's plan on that at the end of it. And Miss Anna will take great care of you. 
I just sink it. That's great. And hygienists use that mm-hmm. same verbiage. I love at the end of it. Okay, Kara. So we're just going to do that fluoride as the final piece of your appointment today. We're going to do the fluoride varnish. It's $32 out of pocket. It's way cheaper than a filling and it's going to be proactive and preventative. I've got mint or caramel. What flavor would you prefer? Exactly. That's it. That's all you have to say. And if they say, no, I don't really want it, by all means, you at least educated them. Um, And then I also love to take it one step further with those hygienists who are already rocking it out or those who just want to take an extra challenge. And I love, I totally, we swiped this from Heidi Arndt. She does a fantastic job of this. But what she she said is, and this struck me, I went to a, a hygiene seminar. I didn't hear a lot of it, but this is the one thing that really stood out to me there. She calls it fluoride therapy. And I love this because she bundles the fluoride varnish with the toothpaste. And I love this because then the patient can be proactive and preventative at home. So you just bundle it together. It's $50 for fluoride therapy where you do the in-office varnish and then send them home with fluoride toothpaste so they can continue to be proactive and preventative. I think this struck home to me because I wished so badly somebody would have told me this earlier on in my life. I wish they would have, mm-hmm. because I had really sensitive teeth and my teeth hurt a lot. And I was always afraid of getting cavities and Nobody ever told me that there was something I could do. Me as a patient, we're always scared because once our teeth rot out, that we get bacteria or excuse me, we get decay. We as patients feel there's nothing we can do. And so it's almost, I think that's why patients hate going to the dentist is because we're waiting for the ball to drop on us that our teeth are all rotted out. We have to get crowns. We have to get root canals. We have to get implants. It's like, gosh, there's nothing I can do. We can't grow another set of teeth. There's nothing we as patients can do besides brush and floss. That's all we know we can do. But then to find out that we could actually do fluoride at home with a prescription-based toothpaste, that's magic, you guys. That's so magical that you could actually help your patients do something proactively on their own to help prevent their teeth from getting decay. Yeah. And, you know, to take it even a step further, I have a lot of patients that say, you know, I have a work meeting right after this, so I don't want to be all gunked up from that fluoride. But um, I've recommended before just how about we get you a prescription strength toothpaste to take home and you can use that on your own time so that it doesn't mess with your meetings. So a lot of patients say, you know, I don't want the fluoride um, varnish today, but I do want that toothpaste. I really like that toothpaste. So can I get another bottle of that? Awesome. Yes. Give them options because not everybody is going to love the varnish. Not everybody is going to want to do it that day. They have things that are going to hold them back from doing that. So give them other options. But do something. send them home with yes. a toothpaste. Yes. Because there are a lot of options out there and not one size fits all. Not everybody's going to want the toothpaste. Not everybody's going to want the varnish. Not everybody's going to want the bundle. Offer them everything. Try your hardest and just keep trying, trying, trying until you find until you find something that they do want and that works for them. Exactly. And I also think when you're saying trying, like keep trying, I feel hygienists keep trying different phrases because I, I find in my own life, we get stuck in a rut. I think the best way mm-hmm. to explain case acceptance is X, Y, Z. But sometimes that doesn't resonate with people. And so keep working your verbiage and your phrasing and the way, because you get into a habit, you say the same spill eight times or 10 times a day to every single patient. If you're not getting great case acceptance on your fluoride, change that verbiage because you're, what information you're putting out there, you're getting results back from that. So check yourself, track yourself. How many fluoride acceptances did I get today? What was I saying today? Even record yourself don't record the patient, but just have your phone there. You can record yourself to hear what you actually say for fluoride. Um, Because a lot of times when you hear it, you're like, wow, let me change this or let me change that phrase because it's a confidence piece. It's a assume the yes piece and it's finding Mm -hmm. what works. And I, I mean, yesterday, you guys, I tried, it was Voco, the Voco varnish. And I know that it's sticky. I know these things, but I looked in the mirror on that one and the way she applied it, it was fantastic. It was not sticky. It was not goopy. And it really did not show on my teeth. And even if you just snap some pictures, maybe do a fluoride varnish on your hygiene friends, snap a picture so patients can see, I don't want to look goopy. Say, you know what? We just Mm -hmm. did this on Sarah yesterday. This is what it looked like when we painted it on. Are you comfortable walking out like this? Because the benefits far outweigh this look. I really Mm -hmm. could not see any fluoride on my teeth when I walked out yesterday. And so I think some of those things can also help your patients too. I know that's taking fluoride to an extreme, but I really do believe your patients, the benefits of varnish far outweigh that, that one or two hours of goop on there that I really do believe you can just do it and and not have a problem with it. Yeah, exactly. And 
you know, as, as a hygienist, get some samples, try a lot of different varnishes because they're all going to be a little bit different and you might find one that you really like and you might find one that you don't really like. And that might be a conversation to have with the patient, you know, and that might be a selling point as well as I have tried both of these. This one right here is my favorite because it doesn't get all goopy. Mm -hmm. Um, and they might be like, great, let's try it. You know, something new, let's try that one. And that might be a good conversation or selling point. Okay, guys, I told Paige that we'd have this one short and sweet. <laughs> this is Floride. I love Floride. Paige loves Floride. So go out and try Floride. Know your price point. Let them know. Paige, you did a fantastic job when you said it'll take one minute at the end of your appointment. It's real quick and easy, and it's $32 out of pocket. I don't even go into the whole insurance thing. If they ask, hey, does my insurance cover? I say, you know, with your insurance, it's $32 out of pocket. Most of the time, they don't cover people over 18, but the benefits far outweigh any of the risks. And I really think for you, this is what we should do. I've got bubble gum or mint, whatever flavor. What one do you prefer? Just assume the yes. Mm -hmm. Paige, I love another thing you've said in the past is you actually will take the floss and dip it in the fluoride if they have watches yes. and you'll floss mm -hmm. in between the teeth. I absolutely love that because it feels proactive and preventative. And I think those two words, patients love to know that they're proactive and preventative. So try it out. Go get the fluoride. Try it out. If you guys have questions or your hygiene team has questions, Paige is all She's available. She's a fantastic resource. So be sure to reach out info at the team.com. And if you're loving this, if you're getting good gems and nuggets, as always, please share the best, just like in a patient base, the best way to help other healthcare professionals within our dental industry is to share good information. So if you guys are loving the A-Team, share a review, tell your friends about us because We've got more people just like Paige on here and we have Paige on here a lot. So those hygienists, those tricky questions, send them on over to us. Paige and I will happily chat about them. And as always, Paige, thank you for joining me on the podcast. Thank you for having me, Kira. Of course. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Paige catching you guys on the Dental Aid team and we will see you guys next time. Thanks again, everyone. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Aid team podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time. 